Chapter 2 The Northern Mountains Get set. Tick the correct option for the following questions. Which is the highest Indian peak? A. Kanchanjunga B. Nanda Devi C. Ketu What do you mean by the word Himalaya? A. Land of peaks B. Land of rising sun C. Abode of snow The northernmost landscape of the country includes the Karakoram and the Himalayan ranges of mountains. They are stretched like a wall across the north. The northernmost range is the Karakoram, the second highest peak in the world, Mount K2 or Mount Godwin, Austin, lies in this range in Jammu and Kashmir. To the south of the Karakoram range lie the mighty Himalayas. Though geologically young, the Himalayan mountains are the loftiest and the most rugged of the world. Since they stretch across 2,400 km from Kashmir in the north through Arunachal Pradesh in the northeast, these mountains form an arc. This helps to prevent the cold Arctic winds from reaching the tropical landmass. Lengthwise, we can divide it into the western, central and eastern Himalayas. The western Himalayas encompass Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. The central Himalayas are spread over Uttarakhand and Nepal. The eastern Himalayas, also known as Purvanchal, cover northern West Bengal, Sikkim, Bhutan and Arunachal Pradesh. The Himalayas vary in width between 350 km to 150 km. Furthermore, the entire mountain belt is divided into three mountain ranges width-wise that run parallel to each other. The Himadri or the Greater Himalayas, the Himachal or the Middle Himalayas, the Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas. Chirpi says, The Himalayan range passes through five nations, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan and China. The Himadri or the Greater Himalayas. It is the highest of all the three ranges with average peaks reaching up to 6,000 meters above the sea level. It contains all the highest peaks or mountains, including Mount Everest. The peaks are permanently covered with snow. Kanchanjunga and Nanda Devi are two of the highest mountain peaks of this range. Several rivers such as the Ganga, Yamuna, Brahmaputra, Indus and Satluj arise from the Himatri. Chirpi says, The Himatri range is home to glaciers and snow-capped mountains. Two well-known glaciers, named Gangotri and Yamunotri, are located in this range. The Himachal or the Middle Himalayas In this range, the mountains are not as high as in Himatri range. The average peaks rising as high as 3,700 to 4,500 meters. It is covered by forest and beautiful valleys. Most people live in hill towns such as Masuri, Shimla and Darjeeling. Valleys such as Srinagar, Nainital and Kangra comes in this range. The Shivalik or the Outer Himalayas. It is the lowest range of mountains. The slopes are covered with thick forests. The foothills of the Shivalik range are called the Terai region. It receives heavy rainfall. There are some national parks to stop deforestation or cutting of plants and to protect animals such as Corbett National Park and Kaziranga National Park. The Northern Mountains Significance and Importance The Northern Mountains are the most significant geographical structure of India. They comprise the most dominating geographic feature of India. No other mountain range anyway in the world has affected the life of people and shaped the destiny of a nation as the northern mountains have in respect of India. The following few points will bring out the significance of these mountains to India. Climatic influence The Himalayas are one of the most influencing factors other than monsoon on India's climate. Blessed with a high altitude length and location, they effectively intercept the summer monsoons coming from the Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal and cause precipitation in the form of rain and snow. Besides, they prevent the cold continental air masses of Central Asia 
from entering into India. In the absence of the Himalayas, the whole India would have been a desert devoid of the rain and winters would have been severe here under the influence of coal air masses coming from Central Asia. Defence The Himalayas have been protecting India from outside invaders since early times, thus serving as defence barrier. In spite of the advancement in modern warfare technology, the defence role of the Himalayas cannot be neglected. Source of the rivers Almost all the great and perennial rivers of India originate from the Himalayan mountains or glaciers. Snow melt in summer provides water to these rivers even during dry season and hence these are perennial rivers. Himalayan rivers are the lifeline of North India. Fertile soil The sediments carried by the Himalayan rivers are deposited in the northern plains in the form of fertile soil, making the plains one of the most fertile lands of the world. Hydroelectricity Deep valleys in the Himalayas are the best location for the construction of the dams. The Himalayan region offers several sites which are suitable for the production of the hydroelectricity. There are natural waterfalls at certain places, while dams could be constructed across rivers at some places. Forest wealth The Himalayan ranges are very rich in forest resources. In their rising altitude, the Himalayan ranges show a succession of vegetal cover from the tropic to the alpine. The Himalayan forests provide fuel, wood and a large variety of raw materials for forest-based industries. Besides, many medicinal plants grow in the Himalayan region and several patches are covered with the grass offering rich pastures for grazing animals. Agriculture The Himalayas do not offer extensive flat land for agriculture but here slopes are terraced for the cultivation. Rice is the main crop on the terraced slopes. The other crops are wheat, maize, potatoes and gingers. Tea is a unique crop which can be grown on the hill slopes only. A wide variety of fruits such as apples, peaches, grapes, pears, mulberries, walnuts, cherries, apricots, etc. are also grown in the Himalayan region. Tourism the Himalayas provide the huge scope of tourism due to its scenic beauty and healthy environment. The hilly areas in the Himalayas offer cool and comfortable climate when the neighbouring plains are reeling under scorching heat of the summer season. Millions of tourists from different parts of the country as well as from abroad throng the Himalaya tourist centres to enjoy their natural beauty. Some of the famous tourist spots in the Himalayas Amasuri, Shimla, Kulu, Manali, Nainital, Chamba, Rani Cape, Almora, Darjeeling, Mirik, Gangtok, etc. Pilgrimage The Himalayas are considered as an abode of the gods. Apart from their beautiful scenery and their significance as tourist place, Himalayas are proud of being studded with sanctified shrines. Mount Kailash is mentioned as the abode of Lord Shiva in Veda. Every year, thousands of pilgrims trek through the difficult terrain of the Himalayas to bear their reverence to these sacred shrines Kailash, Amarnath, Badrinath, Kedarnath, Tungnath, Vaishnodevi, Jwalaji, Uttarakashi, Gangotri, Yamunotri, etc. are some of the important places of pilgrimage. Minerals The Himalayan region contains many valuable minerals. There are vast potentialities of mineral oil in the tertiary rocks. Coal is found in the Kashmir, copper, lead, zinc, nickel, cobalt, antimony, tungsten, gold, silver, limestone, semi-precious and precious stones, gypsum and magnesite are known to occur at more than 100 localities in the Himalayas. Think of why. The northern mountains may be far from your house, but they have a great effect on your life. How? Quick review. The northern mountains comprise two ranges, Karakoram and Himalayan. Lengthwise, we can divide the Himalayas into the western, central and eastern Himalayas. Widthwise, we can divide the Himalayas into Himadri, 
Himachal and Shivalik. The northern mountains are the most significant geographical structure of India. The Himalayas protect India from outside invaders, provide rich forest resources, best location for construction of dams, etc.